You know, I get a lot of questions about different deer hunting topics, um, but I probably get more questions about playing the wind than anything else. Playing the wind is absolutely critical to success if you want to consistently kill mature bucks. Um, in this video, I'm going to explain the three important keys to remember when it comes to playing the wind. And I'm also going to share a couple of different hunts with you. Uh, one of those hunts is from about 30 years ago. And on that hunt, I was in my 20s. I was just learning to, uh, how important the wind was and trying to figure things out. And I screwed up on a really big buck on that hunt. He got away, but what I learned on that hunt helped me kill a lot of bucks in the years that followed. And then the second hunt we're gonna show you, I actually, it's, it's way more recent, it was just a few years ago, and I actually kill a mature buck on that hunt. But what's important is on that hunt, that buck was doing everything that he should as a mature buck to stay alive. He was playing the wind to his advantage, but I was also playing the wind to my advantage, knowing what he was gonna do. And we're gonna show you that from an aerial view, and you're gonna get a good idea on how to play the wind Hopefully when this video is over, it can take your hunting success to a new level. So let's start by discussing the three steps to properly playing the wind. The first two are gonna be pretty obvious to everybody. The third is probably not so obvious, but all three are very important. So step number one is you need to be able to access your stand without the wind blowing your scent into an area where you expect the deer to be. Um, sounds real simple, but I get a lot of questions about stand access, and I'm telling you, if a stand does not have good access, it is not a good stand site. So you need to be able to access that stand without the wind blowing your scent into the area you expect the deer to be. Step number two is with that same wind direction, once you get into your stand, you need to be able to hunt with the wind blowing your scent into an area you don't expect to be. And again, it has to be the same wind that allowed you to access that stand will also allow you to sit in that stand and not be detected. So those two are very simple. You probably already thought of those or already know those. Let's go to step three, which is probably the most important of all three. Step number three is that same wind direction must be such that a buck should be comfortable moving past your stand. In other words, you're not expecting the buck to throw caution to the wind, pun intended, and just waltz past your stand. He needs to be doing things in such a way that that wind is allowing him to feel safe. If he doesn't feel safe, he's just gonna lay in his bed and not even get up and move. So that same wind direction that allows you to access your stand, hunt from your stand, has to be good for that buck to move past your stand. There's a lot of um, scent elimination products, other products that are geared towards eliminating your scent. Uh, one company even had a slogan, forget the wind, just hunt. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you could be 100% scent free and just magically drop out of the sky into your stand, it, it's still not a good situation because you need a wind that's comfortable for that buck. He needs to feel feel comfortable to be on his feet moving past your stand. You need to know that that buck is likely to be at point A and he's likely to get out of that bed and move to point B or vice versa if it's in the morning. And you need to be able to allow him to have a good wind to do that. Um, I think probably the best way to explain that further is to take you on a couple of hunts that I've experienced in my lifetime. One of those hunts, the first one we're gonna see, is from more than 30 years ago. I was in my early to mid 20s. I knew the importance of playing the wind, but I was just starting to put the pieces together. And on this hunt, um, I had a chance at a big old mature buck, but he slipped through the cracks because I didn't know exactly what I was doing when it comes to playing the wind. So let me set the stage for this first hunt. Again, this was about 30 years ago. I was in my early to mid 20s. Um, I was working a job at a local factory. I was working the day shift, so I would get up about daylight and head into the job. I'd get off at three in the afternoon. And uh, during hunting season, I would always go from my job to the woods uh, and get an evening hunt in. Um, 
on this particular day it was mid-october it had rained the entire night before and as i was heading to work that that morning um, about daylight the rain it was just stopping um, i knew the wind direction that morning as i headed into work work that day come back that that afternoon for an afternoon hunt at this particular property and i'm walking down a fence row to get to this woods where my stand was located and as I'm walking along that fence row, I noticed a single set of deer tracks. I mean, a big, fresh set of deer tracks that were following that same fence row that I was. And I knew it was a, a, probably a mature buck uh, because he was by himself and the tracks were so large. And I, I was pretty sure where that buck was headed. He was headed to a bedding location that was real close to the stand that I was headed to. So I felt pretty good about my chances of seeing a good buck that evening. But uh, as I'm walking along and I'm kind of following this big set of tracks towards my stand, I got to thinking, you know, as long as these tracks are in this open field, I'm gonna follow them. I wanna see what that buck did that morning as he was headed into bed at this location. I wanted to, to see exactly what he was doing and maybe there was somewhere along that route where he was moving towards his bed where I could set a stand and take advantage of killing him in the future. So I, I followed those tracks up towards uh, the woodlot that held my stand. And before we got to the woodlot, that buck made a right angle turn uh, about 50 yards from the woods and, and walked the downwind edge of that woods or the, the downwind edge that morning when the wind was out of the west. And uh, once he had went to the edge of the woods, he hooked right back into the woods. So in other words, what that buck did was he ran the downwind edge and scent checked that woods and then he hooked back into it before bedding. And I realized right then that there was no, no possible place I could have had a stand that morning without that buck busting me. He was gonna win me no matter where I was at along that route that he took to get to his bed. And that really opened my eyes to just how difficult it is to kill a buck in the morning when he's on his way to his bed. Now sure, there's guys, it happens every year Somebody kills a giant buck on an October morning hunt. But I'll tell you, after that experience, I quit hunting October mornings because I truly believe for every mature buck that is killed on an October morning hunt, there's at least a hundred others that are spooked. And I like to play the odds. I'm not gonna go out there and spook a whole bunch of mature bucks with the hope of, of getting lucky one time. So I quit hunting October mornings. Um, after following that buck's tracks and seeing how he accessed his bed that morning, I looped back around, got in my stand. Now my stand was situated kind of right in the middle of that woods. There was a small creek that went through that woods and my stand was right on the edge of that creek. And on each side of the creek, about 20 yards, was a deer trail that paralleled that creek. So in other words, I'm set up right in the middle of two deer tra trails, one on each side of my stand. And uh, I, had to, I had to be in the middle to be able to get a shot at each one. Well, that was a big mistake that I, I learned that day just to how important it was. But it seemed that every time I seen a deer from that stand, that deer was always on the downwind trail and always scented me. And uh, I finally, on this particular hunt, sure enough, it gets about a half hour before quitting time and I turned my head just in time to see this giant 10 pointer coming down the trail and lock up on my scent. He just hit my scent and as soon as he did, he looked up at me, his eyes bugged out of his head and he blew out of there. I'll never forget the sight of that big buck. Um, I hadn't killed many big bucks or I don't even know if I'd killed any at that point, but uh, at least none as big as this guy was. Um, he blew out of there and I'm sitting there all dejected. I knew I was gonna see a good buck because I'd seen his tracks come into that bedding area. So I felt really confident and he did exactly what he should have. He was on the downwind trail. Since that day, I've started setting multiple stands in those situations. So I know the deer is gonna take that downwind trail. No matter which way the wind's blowing, he's gonna be on that downwind side of the cover. I set my stand just a little bit further downwind and when they come through now, I've got a shot at them and, and very seldom do I get picked off. Sometimes you think you're giving up something. Maybe you, you're not, you can only shoot to one trail instead of two, 
but oftentimes if your stand is in the right location, they're not gonna be on that other trail anyway. Um, I try to kill mature bucks on purpose now rather than just by luck. And one way I do it is by playing the wind. And I learned so much on this, this one hunt. Even though that giant 10 pointer got away from me, he, he helped me kill a lot of other giant bucks years later. So let me set the stage for this last hunt. It's an early November morning hunt. On this property, it's a small property, probably 20 to 30 acres total cover. But there's two, the two older bucks on that property were a three and a half year old and a four and a half year old. Ironically, the three and a half year old had a better rack than the four and a half. And the four and a half hadn't grown much since the year before. So I wanted to kill him and allow that three and a half year old to hopefully be the biggest buck on the property and survive to an older age class. Uh, so he was, so my target buck was that four and a half year old. Um, as you can see on the aerial of this farm, there's a couple of food plots. And what I expected to be going on, again, this is early November. Um, the rut is just starting to, to heat up a little bit. I expected there to be some does feeding around those food plots, you know, overnight in the early morning. Um, and I expected any bucks on the property to be there with those does, you know, checking to make sure, see if they're in heat, maybe uh, have something to eat in the food plots, whatever. But uh, shortly after daylight, I expected those bucks would be headed back to cover to bed for the day. Um, as you can see from the aerial, the access I took to my stand that morning avoided those food plots. I wanted to, expected those deer to be there, so I wanted to avoid spooking those deer on the way to my stand. Uh, my stand was situated right on the edge of the bedding cover, as you can see. Um, the wind was just perfect for these bucks because they could access or, or they could travel that downwind edge of that bedding cover and then hook back into it like bucks so often do. And that's exactly what happened. Shortly after daylight, um, I looked down the trail and here comes the three and a half year old buck, the really good one that I wanted to survive. And he comes and he walks right past me just doing what mature bucks should do. Uh, he's got the wind in his favor. He's running that downwind edge of the bedding cover. And I film as he slowly feeds past me in the brush and Jay hooks right back into the cover to bed for the day. And as I just turned the video camera off from filming that three and a half year old buck, I've still got the video camera in my hand and I look up the trail and here comes that four and a half year old buck that I want to shoot. And as fast as I can, I put that camera back on the arm, lock it in place, position it where I think the buck's gonna stop for a shot, hit the record button, grab my bow off the hanger, slip the release on the string, come to full draw, and I did all that as fast as I possibly could. And just as I come to full draw, that buck stops behind a, a tree. Uh, that tree was a double trunk tree and his vitals were right in that crack between the two tree trunks. And I thought, well, I can surely slip an arrow between there. And I settled that pin right on his vitals, right between uh, those two tree trunks and center home. He goes crashing off and, uh, you know, a short time later, um, he, he probably ran 50 yards, piled up in the brush and, and recovered him a short time later. But, you know, a lot of things happened on that uh, hunt that many hunters might take for granted or, or probably I take it for granted really that I should explain a little further. First of all, the route I took to get to that stand that morning is not the route that I would normally take. Um, I went a little bit out of my way because of where I expected those deer to be. I expected those deer to be around those food sources, you know, right before daylight or right at daylight. And I wanted to stay as far away from those food sources as I could as I accessed that stand. So I actually went to that stand almost with a crosswind, where a lot of times I like to access my stands with the wind right in my face. But this time that crosswind was just a little bit better so I didn't spook any deer on my way in. Um, the second thing that I really want to point out, and it's really important here, you know, I talked about that step number three. You need to give a mature buck the wind, allow him to do what he naturally wants to do to stay safe and stay alive. And these bucks did everything they should do as mature bucks. They were utilizing the wind to their best advantage to go in and bed for the day. I happened to be set up just on the edge and that wind was at just enough of an angle that those bucks couldn't smell me. If I'd have been on the other side of that path that they came down, 
they would have smelled me. So, you know, it's really important not to expect a buck to commit suicide. Don't expect him to walk around with a tailwind or doing something stupid. Give him the wind. And it takes time, it takes a lot of years to learn to play the wind. You just don't go out there tomorrow and automatically become a better hunter because uh, you, you just instantly learned how to play the wind. It's a continual learning process and especially for the specific property you're on. You can learn the basics of playing the wind, but you know, a wind traverses across the different properties in different ways. There's places where it'll eddy and swirl around. There's also places where it'll loop. It'll come back. I, I've sit in stands where maybe the wind's out of the west, but I get in my stand and there at the ground, the wind's actually out of the east because of the way that wind is, is hitting the woods. So it, uh, playing the wind is just a, it's a never ending learning experience, um, but you, the better you get at it, the more consistent you can be at killing these mature bucks. Um, like I said at the beginning, I get more questions on playing the wind than just about anything. And there's nothing probably more important, but I, if you don't remember anything else from this video, remember this, you can't go by the slogan, forget the wind, just hunt. It doesn't work. A mature buck never forgets the wind and never should you.